As the 150th birth anniversary of Mohandas Gandhi draws to a close this October 2nd, his life's moral compass, the 15th century bhajan by Narsi Mata, Vaishnava Janato, has found yet another vista. This time it is in the troubled paradise of Kashmir. That is why Kusum called Vyas of Ahmedabad, who is a Kashmiri Pandit, dislodged from the valley some 30 years ago by the separatist insurgency. Kusum's family had to flee in the face of serious death threats with at least two of her family members murdered in targeted killings. Her father, British Christian Call, was next on the list, but they managed to flee before that. Rather than harboring an animus, Kusum has chosen to respond in the best possible way she could think of, have the 15th century bhajan translated into Kashmiri by a well-known Kashmiri poet, Shabas Akbari. The bhajan's translation jumped languages from Gujarati to Urdu by her father, British Christian Call, and then on to Kashmiri. Kusum was keen that bhajan's orchestration was authentic and had Kashmiri sounds and instrumentation. She was equally keen that the video of the bhajan was shot at emblematic locations in the valley. Bharat FM spoke to Kusum, who has the hope that someday the message of the bhajan will resonate in the valley and bring peace back. First, tell me about your very first introduction to Vaishnava Janato. Kab suna apne? How did you find out about it? I know it's always been in Gujarat air, but still, as a Kashmiri, what was your first brush with Vaishnava Janato? I think um, as a child, I have always been fascinated with Gandhi ji. And I, we have been hearing Vaishnava Janato from radio. You know, that was my first uh, uh, 2nd October or uh, uh, this uh, 30th uh, January. So I, I think it has been always in my subconscious. Vaishnava Janato has always been there. Uh -huh. uh, but um, uh, the seed, I think, really, uh, when I got very close to Vaishnava Janato, when you came to Gujarat, when you came to Ahmedabad for making your documentary on Narsi Mehta and Vaishnava Janato, I think um, uh, that that was the time when I really got closer to it. I see. Uh, when you shot in Junagadh and other places, right. you recorded the song. Uh, with a famous singer of Gujarat. Uh, you may have been away in Junagadh, but I was, you know, thinking about it. Why, why is this fellow coming from all the way from America to shoot this song? And then I started uh, researching a bit about it. Right. And then I forgot it. Then as you left, and uh, I think off and on, we were talking about uh, what, what about the documentary? When is it coming here and there? So I think it is. It remained with me. That part remained with me. Okay. Uh, before yeah. I dwell on uh, the actual project that we are here for, I want you to recall a little bit uh, for our listeners and viewers your childhood in Kashmir, in the yeah. valley. Uh, you grew yeah. up there. Uh, I'm sure you have lots of vivid memories. And you grew up yeah. at a time when things were not half as bad as they are now. So tell us about normal. your childhood, yes. Where did you grow up and how was it? I was uh, born in Anantanag. Uh, that is uh, where my uh, uh, great-grandfather's grandfather, uh, they lived there. They had uh, initially shifted from Srinagar to Anantanag. Uh, but um, um, I have grown up in Anantanag and my uh, memories are, are of uh, mountains, chinars, the fruits, the flowers, and uh, Nagbal. Nagbal is a place in Anantanag, which is uh, which has many springs of different sizes. Right. And there is a sulfur spring also. The water comes directly uh, into the springs under the mountain. Right. I remember how I learned swimming there going from school, you know, running away from school with my uh, two brothers. And after recess, we would, uh, for three, four hours, till the school time would be over, we would be swimming. I see. Yes, in those springs. 
initially the uh, you know the, which used to be three four feet deep, and then we shifted we uh, to one, the ones which were six feet deep. I see. And then I remember jumping from the temple tops into the springs, okay. which I would do daringly. <laughs> Unlike other children, you know, they would be scared, but uh, I was never scared. I would jump from the temple top into the water. <laughs> oh, that's that was lovely. yes. No, but yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I I I remember uh, you know swimming along the green fish. There were a lot of fish uh, in those uh, springs uh, because uh, nobody would take away the fish from that water. They would remain there only. And when the water would flow out of the spring, they would go away. Some when it it would be extra. But I remember uh, seeing myself swimming along with the fish okay. in those ponds. That's my fond memory of Anantanag and Nagbal. So the way you are describing it sounds very idyllic. In fact, I remember Nagbal, but when I went to Anantanag area as part of my Kashmir assignment. It was a horrible sight, but anyway, that's the, beside the point. Tell me about uh, uh, for for an extended period of your early childhood and into adulthood, things were generally all right. Community relations were all right. Yes. Tell, tell us a bit yes, about yes, that. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, I think we, uh, you know, uh, perhaps parents kept us in a very uh, comfortable zone. They did not allow us to uh, face. Uh, uh, the harsh reality, or perhaps it was not there. I don't know. I never felt. Uh, from Anantanag, uh, my father was transferred uh, to Baramula, that is Northern Kashmir. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. So I studied there in St. Joseph Side Secondary School. That was a Christian missionary school. Uh, so straight away, we landed in an atmosphere where uh, uh, students from all over India, it's a, a border area where uh, army students, army was always stationed at the border. So mm -hmm. children from the army uh, would be also there in the school. So we had, a, I had a, a different kind of upbringing where we never had this fair or anything. You know, uh, best faculty, best uh, of sports. I was more into sports uh, during my uh, school time also. Uh, so we never thought about such things. We never thought that there's something, there would be uh, something horrible or bad in the valley. We had a beautiful childhood, beautiful childhood, where oh, we had fresh yeah. air, fresh food, you know, best of everything. That is, the, our father kept, kept us in a very comfort zone. Okay. When did you first begin to notice uh, the shifts towards tension and then eventually violence? Uh, I think when I was in, uh, it was in 86, riots took place um, in the valley, some temples were burnt. It, it, I, we thought at that time that uh, I was in college, we thought at that time it was, you know, something political, some political party wants to get some image out of it. So, so we took it that way. Okay. At that time, as, uh, as, I was a student, so I would not have much sense of what is happening around. It, it, some took it very seriously, but uh, we did not take, especially my father, our family, we did not take. We thought it was something of a political kind of a thing, that uh, temples were burned, this thing happened, that thing happened. Okay, we uh, okay, this thing happens. It will go back to normal. And it did seem that it went back to normal. And we went to university to do my master's in mass and journalism. There, my friends, uh, my Muslim friends, they told me, I was very close to them, they told me that something like this is happening in the valley. I see. They gave me, they gave me even a cassette also, where uh, uh, I heard the cassette and there were speeches, you know, uh, provocative speeches from uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir leaders who were handling the whole thing in the valley. But initially, then I showed it to my people at home, uh, when they didn't believe it. They thought, no, 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 nothing like this can happen in the valley. They are just, you know, they, they, they are uh, uh, just making fun or something of you. No, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Nobody took it seriously. Okay. okay. Yeah. But and I knew they are... Uh, huh. 
No, no, sorry, go ahead. You are completing a thought. But uh, somehow um, I felt there's these friends of mine, they were telling me something. You know, I, I was serious about it, but uh, nobody uh, around took it seriously. I see. Then I also left it. I said, no, no, maybe they know better than me. I see. So we are, we are moving a bit towards 1989 when things really began to go haywire. I won't go into great detail because that's not the theme of our conversation today. But at what point did your family decide to leave and under what circumstances? Uh, actually, um, all of a sudden, uh, uh, Kashmiri Pandits who were you know, in certain positions and they were leaders, they were getting killed one by one. Right. I remember uh, some some decision makers. There was certain. Then one of my uncle, uh, Pranjit Premnath, Premnath but he was killed. Then my uh, mama, was, he was killed. He was also a leader in his area. Pandit Premnath but was uh, with uh, Pandit Premnath but's death, uh, murder. Um, the uh, Pandit community, they started leaving Anantanag. Okay. okay. Uh, they thought that, uh, they, then they got the hang of it that they are trying to kill, uh, uh, kill the leaders and they will leave. Okay. Then, yes. So that was the basic plan. It was, the plan was that only. And it happened like that only. Then my mama got killed. And then we, uh, we decided that... Uh, uh, we will leave, but uh, we were we all shifted to our mama's place because uh, we wanted to be with them. Then uh, one day my father said, "It has been a lot of time. Let's go back home and we will just see because we had left in a hurry." Mm -hmm. So he said, "Let us go." I said, "Okay, I will come with you. You don't go alone." So he and me we went home from our uh, uncle's place. So there we saw on the you know poles telephone uh, this uh, electrical poles they had put up a list of people that they wanted to kill really and in that yes and in that there was my another uncle's name my dad's name and another two names which i don't remember at this time that they wanted to we have killed so many and now these people will also be killed i so, see so uh, yes so we went home and my dad said, uh, now we don't have time to inform your mother or your sister. We will have to leave immediately. I see. So we, we gathered some clothes, something, I don't remember now what all we, uh, we collected and we left. Oh, we booked a taxi and me and my father, we left the way that this night. Was, this was 89, 90 time, what uh, yes. year are we talking? This, Yes, 89. This was 80. Okay. Uh, this was 90. Okay, and did you first this come to Delhi or Ahmedabad? Where did you first go? No, no. Because we left in such a hurry and my uncle, whose name was also there, they also left in another taxi in the same way that we, we left. But we did not know where to go. But uh, my father said, oh, in Udampur, my, uh, my Masi's uh, brother-in-law's son, he lives there. So I think we should go. We should go to Udampur only. Uh, we said. I said okay. I didn't have an opinion. I said okay. So we reached Udampur. Um, I think somewhere in the morning or so, I don't remember now. But uh, we didn't have the address, and there were no telephones at that time. Right. So uh, so we started asking at the taxi stand that there is a person like this. And he had been recently transferred, so nobody knew him there. So we kept on asking, asking, asking till uh, it was midday, then evening. Then we thought, now it is getting dark. We have to go somewhere. Hmm. Then by, by evening uh, or by late night, we thought there's somebody, some Kashmiri Pandit there. Daddy said, no, no, he looks like a, a Kashmiri Pandit. Let us ask him, maybe he knows. And we asked him that there is some, uh, this we know the Siku, is he? He said, yeah, yeah, I know him. He lives somewhere this and he gave us the address. I see. So by, I think one or two, we reached his place. He was shocked. Uh, you are here and only two of you, where are others? 
So mm. we told him, we narrated the whole story, how we had to leave. So we were there. Now there was, because already telephone lines had been snapped in the valley. Okay. Telephones were not working. They were down. So we had, we had, uh, we knew that we will not be able to uh, communicate with the, our family. So then I think after um, 22 days, my mother and sister, they landed at the same place. Oh, I see. With my aunt, yes. Uh, what had happened, they, they realized that they are not coming back. Why are they not coming back? They were supposed to be here. They should be here within a week's time or something. So they said, no, no, I think we should go there and we should ask someone what happened. So when they came home, they saw the lock on the door. So they thought we are out somewhere. Okay. They, they went to the neighbor's place. Okay, they had come. Okay, so they have gone. So many days have passed. This is what happened here. And you are still here. We had thought that you also have gone. You have also left the valley. Right. Our Muslim neighbors, we yeah. had kept the key with them. So I that know. in case when they come, at least they will have the key of the house. So my sister, they went back again. They said that this thing has happened there and they have left. Now, I think we should not stay here. We should also leave. So they, all of them together in a truck, they left at midnight. I see. I see. Yes. They left in a truck. They were in a truck for a whole day till they reached oh my. Uh, Udampur. Because they also had nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where to go. So they uh, also reached there after so many days. And right. we met after 22 days. Yeah. To jump the chronology a bit, uh, when was your first brush with Ahmedabad? Uh, I, uh, while I was a student in Kashmir University, that time UGC, uh, UGC had organized a program for us in ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, Ahmedabad, for a course on development communication. I see. So, yes, so all the students, 20 of us, we came to Ahmedabad, stayed in ISRO, and uh, we had a wonderful time, you know, meeting all the scientists, social scientists. It was something uh, uh, very unimaginable for us. Right. To know that there is something like uh, space science and there is an ISRO, there is this, you know. It was, it was something um, you know, very interesting and enlightening for us to know uh, such things. And we really loved Ahmedabad because um, uh, it was uh, in winter. I see. Later on, I realized how oh. horrible it is to stay in 45 degrees in a Gujarat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. So, so I think, um, uh, well, uh, coming to Gujarat in winter is... <laughs> yeah, it's like early summer in Kashmir, I think. Yes, yeah, yes, that is right. Yeah. So we, all the people, you know, they really took care of us. And everything was so beautiful, you know. Uh, I just loved the place. Everybody, I also loved the place. I and see. we went back with such, we went to Amul, GNFC, all big places of, uh, we traveled all over Gujarat. We went to Panch Mahal. You know, we saw a totally different world. Right. And Gujarat has been... Uh, Always, uh, I, uh, when I saw it at that time, I think it was a far better uh, developed and way ahead than other states of India. True. So, uh, that is, yes. So we saw a totally different uh, uh, kind of India at that time. Okay. That was the first time. And next year again, UGC organized a program for us uh, uh, in uh, Gujarat University. Gujarat University uh, Educational Media Research Center. They send us there for uh, uh, video training, program making. They thought we will get a better exposure here. So we were here for two months next time. Okay. Next okay. year, yeah. All right. Uh, just for the sake of our audience's clarification, UGC would be the University Grant Commission. Uh, I, I want to come to Vaishnava Janato. Uh, I'm fascinated by a couple of facts here. Here is someone who is dislodged from her home in Kashmir, comes to Ahmedabad, gets introduced to a nearly 600-year-old bhajan via the agency of Mohandas Gandhi, 
and decides to do what? Decides to get it translated for the Kashmiri audience, jumping languages from Gujarati to Urdu to Kashmiri. Tell me your story about that. <laughs> uh, as I told you earlier, uh, during your um, you know, filmmaking, that documentary making, it was there. Uh, but I think um, um, what triggered me was, uh, you know, lockdown during COVID. You know, that time we had a lot of time to ourselves. I uh, read a lot. I wrote a lot. I write short stories. I write poems. And whatever um, I interact with my father, write his stories. Mm -hmm. What uh, Because I feel they will get lost. His stories will get lost. So I write that. And then um, somehow one day again, uh, this Vaishnav, uh, uh, and then I had started reading about uh, Narsi Mehta. And besides that, I want to tell you that uh, I was with Vishu Gujarati Samaj for a long time. Vishu Gujarati Samaj is an organization of Gujaratis world over. Its right. headquarters is in Ahmedabad. So I think for um, we are a member of that. And uh, I was at an uh, important post in that organization uh, there also i um, i learned a lot about gujarat its history its poet writer you know it, it is a very uh, something very interesting and very deep and uh, what comes to my mind i immediately there is a comparison you know i compare with the poet of um, kashmir and then i say oh acha narsimeta was like this oh there was someone called uh, parmanand in kashmir also Right. You know, he would, uh, uh, I have read his stories and his poems, uh, so he would, uh, he would say, I see Krishna uh, in front of me, and then he would write, and we have same stories of Narsi Mehta, uh, uh, he right. would say that I see Krishna and I, and I write, he tells me this, or I feel this, True. so same like uh, Kashmir, and then another thing, um, so there are there are many similar stories where my mind goes, uh, okay, what is similar and what is dissimilar? What is uh, it to learn from uh, Kashmiri culture, uh, Kashmiri Shavet culture, and what is it to learn from uh, Gujarati uh, culture of uh, different faiths? So I keep on learning and uh, experiencing certain things, comparing certain things. Like I will tell you something, you know, which which first uh, hit my mind was. Um, the stories uh, which my mother had told me about Mahabharata, Ramayana, Purans, and Vedas, similar stories I get from my mother-in-law. I see. And both of them have not studied the stories anywhere. They have not read them from the book. They have heard them. Yeah, oral tradition. My yeah. mother has, yes, my mother has heard them, my mother-in-law has heard them. But basically the stories are the same. Right. So I started thinking about why, why and how. Kashmir has been always a landlocked place, you know, surrounded by uh, Himalayas on all the sides. And how is the connection between uh, uh, Gujarat and uh, Kashmir or South or Kashmir, you know? So I, I keep on thinking and learning, reading, then right. discussing. That's how it has been with me uh, since uh, many years. Then all of a sudden I thought, um, why I should not? Uh, the first thing about this uh, Vaishnav Jantu struck me that it is in Gujarati. And most of the people don't understand what it means. Exactly. It is a famous song. The right. tune is very famous, but people don't understand. Yeah. Only Gujarati knowing people would understand what is Vaishnav Jantu. Right. So I thought that, and it is a song, it is a bhajan about humanity. As I see it, how exactly. a human being should be, ideal human being, how Narsi Mehta or Gandhiji had uh, visualized or whatever. The first thing is that, that it is in Gujarati, it needs to be translated to many languages so that people know about it. Then I thought uh, of Kashmir, which may I have left 30 years back, but still I have been keeping in touch and knowing about different things. Then I realized there is not much about Gandhi in the valley. Right. I researched that uh, there is no statue of Gandhi in Kashmir. There is not a single building which is named after Gandhi in Kashmir. Right. 
I see. And there is not a single road which is named after Gandhi Ji in Kashmir. Extraordinary, yeah. Yes. So I thought. Then another point was, uh, in the valley there is a great need of peace. People are struggling there. You know, they have faced uh, many things. The way Kashmiri Pandits have faced outside. Similarly, people in the valley have also faced. many turbulations right in different ways so i thought let me take this song to the valley okay at least and the point was um, uh, getting it translated from a poet who is in the valley mm. in the folk music and by a singer who is in the valley so that people can relate to it right otherwise i have many singers here uh, in ahmedabad in delhi in jammu who can sing in kashmiri and there are many poets kashmiri poets who are residing in uh, rest of india or in the world but i wanted something and people with whom uh, the people could relate to okay their own own folk music own uh, translation right so and people should know and relate to gandhi ji why uh, why he chose this song this song written uh, 700 years back why he why gandhi ji chose this song and how it is very relevant today also true when uh, the whole world uh, wants peace yeah right so in kashmir also we we want peace we want that people should live uh, kashmir which was called heaven on earth so it is a uh, you know it's an effort from my side i will do something for uh, the people of the valley and for my land okay i wanted to do something yes uh tell me a little bit step, about, yeah go ahead go ahead uh i feel it's a uh, it's a small step which i have uh, started because all these uh, uh, all these years 30 years i have been struggling with myself what i can do okay. uh, for the valley for the people what i can do that That's has good, been yeah. you know my conscious has been always telling me that my soul has been telling me that uh, because i have uh, all these years i have felt that my soul is still there i can see and that. my body is there yes yeah, yeah. i have always felt like that yeah, yeah. i may be i may be settled here with all comfort physical comfort but uh, uh, you are still there the, yeah. my uh, yes my inner story is this yeah what about uh, your your father mr bridge krishan call who translated from gujarati into urdu right yes uh, uh, yes tell, tell um, a bit about that and, yes actually uh, i i had uh, there was a program here last january so i met uh, mr gulzar ahmed ghanai he is a very uh, most famous singer of the valley okay. i met him here in ahmedabad so we just uh, hi hello and i was happy to see him he was happy to see me we met and then we parted uh, then when i got this idea so he had given me his number so i called him i was very happy him so you know i thought he may not like the idea he will just feel what is she telling me to do yeah but i thought because i'm feeling uh, and i have an urge to do it maybe he likes it you know just i called him and i told him i have this idea in my mind so i want to do it can you find a poet for me who can translate it and if you can sing it so he listened to me carefully and he said yes yes uh, i would like to do it uh, so we we talked uh, exchange pleasantries and that was it then i thought to myself i said my god he has said yes but i don't believe it i don't think he will do it uh-huh. then i called him again i said um, gulzar sahab um, i had talked to you about the he said yes yes i told you we will do it so i have um, there is one uh, poet uh, mr hagbari Uh, so he will Shabab, do it shabaz so, hagbari yes shabaz hagbari so he said um, um, i said is he a good poet can he relate to gandhi ji 
so like there are many points but this is someone you know who can uh, understand gandhi ji and right. who can understand what uh, narsi mehta so i explained the whole thing to him about gandhi ji about uh, narsi mehta what he has wanted to say but he listened to me patiently i say the whole yes he listened patiently what i told maybe he knew about gandhi ji already that i don't know but uh, i told him and he listened patiently i said okay okay then um, but he felt that uh, i am not believing the part that uh, that poet can do justice to this translation to this song then i talked to the i said give me his number i want to first talk to him i just wanted to know his uh, you know um, depth he what kind of uh, uh, poet he is so uh, i talked to him i felt good then i told him he he asked me this uh, vaishno janto i said it is in gujarati you may not be able to understand and then i said um, how can you understand this then he then i thought about it i said i will tell my father to write it in urdu first okay then um, so i went to my father then i to explain to him also that this is the thing i have thought about this and you know but my father has always believed in me he immediately um, he sat down and he wrote it word by word then i told him this is a gujarati word this is this this is this so it was an exercise in itself making uh, getting it written in urdu then i took a photograph and sent him on whatsapp this is my father has written please check it okay so then then uh, then i told him if you go can go to the net when he listen to the lata mangeshkar uh, what lata mangeshkar has sung but um, then explaining him word by word meaning of uh, gujarati in it okay so what does this gujarati word mean interesting so he yes so because it was in gujarati so he would not understand what it means explaining vaishnav jan itself was an exercise I what vaishnav jan mean yeah yes so i think you remember i called you once what is the exact meaning of uh, right. what what would you say about what does vaish no janmi right so uh, then he told me i have to translate this vaish no jan i said no let us keep vaish no jan because that is the identity of this song we right. should not translate yeah. this word these okay. two words we should not translate we should keep it uh, keep them as such yeah when i because heard then only identified I out that he says vaish no jan in kashmiri too yes okay yes because i thought people will identify otherwise you know we will have to explain that also to them yeah so word by word word by word explain to him everything what this means what this means uh, the uh, uh, explaining narsi mehta to to him okay. what narsi mehta's life was how he wrote why he wrote this how he lived all his life that all i explain to the point okay so then he got a hang of it uh, and then explaining gandhi ji to him uh, so he then he translated then he sent me again uh, because he wrote again in urdu i know urdu but not as good as uh, my father uh, so again i went to my father please read this he has written this then my father gave his input and uh, then i uh, went back to him that uh, i think this is not proper this okay. your urdu word uh, sorry this kashmiri word is not proper here then he would make me understand oh it means no 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 i don't think uh, this is proper you know here and there here and there finally uh, i got satisfied oh, yes this is a proper uh, okay uh, tra- uh, translation for it yeah and you had then to get i meter right huh you had to get sorry. the meter right in order to swing it right the meter yes. of the so that yes yes then he told me this ki you are looking at only the translation part but finally we are singing it we have to look exactly. at that part part also then he explained that to me okay. i said yes but i don't want to you know uh, tomorrow it should not be something like somebody will tell me this did not mean this oh uh, yeah you know i said i i have to look into that also because it's a big responsibility right for me yeah yeah getting the right uh, right translation uh so then again i reverted back to uh, mr gulzar ganai then he said uh, okay 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 to 
then uh, I said, he, I will record it. I said, okay. Finally, he came up one day. I have recorded it in the studio. Then um, he showed me that uh, he had made the studio of uh, rural uh, because they are doing it on folk tune. Right. Are you there, Kasum? They are Kashmiri instruments. So, uh, hello. Yeah, I think there, yes. there was a bit of a break, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he said, I'm doing it in the studio. So then I said, I said, no, I don't think we will get that kind of a feel uh, if we do it in the studio. I don't think so. So he said, I have already done it. Then I said, no, I think we should go to the different locations in the valley to get the real feel of the valley. Right. I said, studio, so we can make in Ahmedabad also. Right. And uh, uh, do the song. So he said, where do you want to do it? I said, um, let's go to Pari Mahal. Uh, he said, why, why Pari Mahal? It's on the mountain top where Dara Shaku uh, translated, uh, Aurangzeb's brother, he right. translated uh, uh, Mahabharata and other, uh, you know, uh, scriptures into Persian. Uh, then he says, oh, acha, acha, these places, I said, I think you do it one, uh, one uh, in, under the Chinar, maybe near the Dal Lake. I said, but I don't want those regular uh, shikaras of the Dal Lake. Yeah. But uh, maybe at a, you know, at a serene place in a Dal Lake. You don't want Kashmir ki Kali there. <laughs> yes. So I think that would be very filmy. So I don't want that. Uh, maybe in some fields here and there. I explain what I had, you know, how I had uh, visualized it. He said, okay, 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 we will do it. Don't worry, don't worry. So he, he, he could feel my anxiety and my tension. Uh, it was growing, it was building up in me. So he said, okay, okay, we will do it. So then after some days, he came back. Uh, Kusunji, we have done it. Um, so uh, please look into it if it okay. is fine. <laughs> he's, he's such a great singer and he has been there for so many years. Yeah. And he has done many videos and um, uh, many things. Um, so I would not, you know, I would feel, should I tell him this much? You know, I would be always hesitant. Right. But then I had to tell him yeah. to get uh, what I wanted. Um, so then finally, when I looked at it, there were tears in my eyes. I said, uh, 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 this is what I wanted. This That's is what I wanted. And yeah. yes, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, above all, I, I think I'll tell you, it was a, a spiritual experience for me. Oh, how nice. I had, yes, yes, that is how it was, you know. Um, I had always been fascinated by Gandhiji, his, uh, his ideology, uh, many things which I have read or felt or whatever. And besides my connection with the valley, I felt... Uh, uh, there was a divine force behind me uh, why uh, I wanted to do it and why I did it. Oh, that's nice. That is, that is how I felt about it. Yes. When do you release it? October 2nd? Uh, yes, October 2nd or midnight. Okay. Uh, we are keeping, uh, yes, uh, live streaming. Okay. Uh, yes, and... Uh, I think that day we will do it uh, online because we had previously thought we will do it, uh, it from Gandhi Ashram. Okay. I had planned it in a big way that we will do it from Gandhi Ashram. But now that because of COVID, we are not able to uh, do anything. Uh, right. So now the only option is, uh, I had actually thought that I will in invite these artists from Kashmir and they will uh, do live in Gandhi Ashram. I see. That's, that, that was my, yes, that was my planning. But uh, now that we see that it is not possible, so live streaming and uh, uh, we will invite the singer, the poet, and some other uh, uh, literary person from the valley who has uh, uh, worked on Gandhiji. Okay. So, uh, and someone uh, from here, so from Gujarat. Okay. Uh, so we will do a live and we will release it on the uh, video. Then on social media, 
right. different uh, platforms of social media and, and then i have uh, in value also it will be uh, uh, played uh, on uh, different channels in jammu also and nationally also it will be played at different places is yes. is it is it your hope that uh, this song has the power to maybe influence some minds in the valley yes 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 i i am hoping i am hoping that it will and it should it will it will yes okay on that yes. uh, optimistic note kasum it's been wonderful talking to you and uh, am i at liberty to at least release the audio with of this or you want yes. me to hold it yes. i can release the audio right yes please yes okay please. thank you so we'll play it with that and uh, look forward to your uh, video production on october 2nd all the best to you thank you thank you thank you thank you namaste Bye. vishnu jan gao sri usde shi kaisi dakha smas dar satan vishnu jan gao sri usde shi kaisi dakha
Sweet, 